Hi there, this is Phil Simborg, USBGF Teaching Pro and a principal of the BackgammonLearningCenter.com. I kid you not, this position came up a couple days ago in our Chouette here in Chicago. I was red and uh, got into a super back game and blue doubled me. And by the way, according to XG, this is not even a double. Let me show you. Uh, it's <laughs> fascinating and a lot of people say, well, you still have to double this, number one, because you might get some passes. We do play the Jacoby rule. Another reason you have to double this is to activate gammons because uh, there are no value in winning a gammon from red unless the cube has been turned. So uh, a lot of us also are not sure that XG even understands this position or can play it outright. And a lot of people are very critical of XG, and I agree. XG can't get all of these kinds of positions right. Uh, even rolling them out, it doesn't necessarily play every move right. Uh, I developed a game called Pasco Gammon, which is a deep back game that many people are playing all over the world, and I named it after Jim Pasco, who's, in my opinion, one of the best backgammon, uh, back game players in the world, and just a great backgammon player anyway, and a great guy, a good friend of mine, so I wanted to honor him, and many people are playing that for money. That's another story, but uh, Jim has played the game playing either side, playing the one in the back game or the one not in the back game against XG and has a winning record both ways. And he, in other words, he's proven that he can play the game, at least a deep back game, better than XG can, no matter which side he plays. Uh, but I think these games are fun, but they're also very instructive. Uh, you don't often get into games like this, but you do get into back games and they're often misplayed by human beings and they still are played better by Extreme Gammon. Today, let's just have a little fun and see how Extreme Gammon plays this game. I'm going to do the, first of all, uh, uh, take the cube and turn it so that we don't get into a double pass situation. And let's give Red the cube. And then I would play from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit Control C so that this position is saved on my clipboard in case the game just gets totally done, which could happen very quickly if Red crashes with some really bad roll like double fives and double threes and most doubles are going to kill red pretty early and the game could be essentially over right away or could go the other way we'll see then i can start to try it again but i'll show you how i learn from the from the master from from extreme gammon and again uh every now and then i'll see a play where i think extreme gammon is totally nuts and i'll study that play and i may roll it out or i may uh even send it to jim pasco and uh, uh, some of our other uh, teaching pros, we've got some pretty good people on our team, like, uh, well, a guy named Mochi, a guy named Paul McGrill. Uh, we've got some pretty good uh, Marty Storer, uh, Stick, John O'Hagan. We've got some pretty special people on our team that I can go to to get information and see what they think about a play and why Extreme Gammon may be wrong or right and why uh, it should make the play. Surprisingly, many plays that humans think Extreme Gammon is wrong about, it turns out Extreme Gammon knows a lot more about this than, than we uh, have imagined. But let's have some fun. Set up, uh, play from position, and I'm going to have our good friend Extreme Gammon play Extreme Gammon. And let's see how he plays it. And just watch. Let's see. This should be fun. Blue's on roll. He's already turned the cube. Let's see what happens. Volunteers a shot. He's not too much afraid of getting hit right now. He wants to bring his checkers in. Gammon knows it's going to leave shots. He'd rather leave them before Red's board is too good. Red really needs to pop out here to keep his board. There he goes. I like Red. By the way, along the way, I want to see what the equities are and take a look uh, what the chances are of Red winning. I like Red's chances now. Red's got his timing. He's going to get plenty of shots. Is it too soon to hit if you roll a six? I wouldn't have hit there with a six, by the way, and broken the ace point necessarily. Certainly I would have hit with the two. That's another thing I've learned from playing with Extreme Gammon and playing Pasco Gammon in deep back games. Pretty good roll. Moving things around. I think we might see a recue soon. Double. Oh, he did. There it is. Take. I predicted that. Look at that. I'm smarter than I look or sound, aren't I? Oops. Maybe a little too soon to recue, but people in my shoe, I don't know anybody dropping that. I like blue now holding a four cube. Whoops. Double. Ah, he redoubles. Take. Takes. 
Lots of gammons here. Lots of wins. Oh, he got him from the back. I think for a second there, I thought he missed. Would you like to be holding an eight cube now? Extreme gammon loves to gamble. He's playing on for the gammon. He's too good to double. That's why he's not doubling back. He thinks he wins enough gammons, uh, much enough more gammons compared to losses. If he doubles back, of course, red would pass now. But red's still in this game. I haven't seen too many moves that are too crazy or controversial. Uh, I think most of the moves that both players made so far in this game, uh, most human beings would have found fairly easily. Fairly straightforward game and uh, certainly justified uh, uh, Blue's doubles here because uh, when Blue wins, he wins big. He's going to win 16 points here unless he rolls one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> a backgammon. Let's stop. Let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this now. Or let's just go back a little bit. I'm just curious. After, after a few rolls, we can stop and look at the equities here. Uh, Blue only has 39% winning chances at this point. Uh, when the redouble came in, it was a take. Yeah, yeah, of course, Extreme Gammon always does it right. All right, that was fairly straightforward, but pretty exciting. A, a backgammon on an 8 cube, that, that's triple. Uh, that, that's uh, 24 points won in that game. And uh, in our Chouette with B, it might have been even more. Take. All right, so I'm going to hit Control V, uh, which. I'm going to save the game. It puts me back to the original position. Let's try it one more time. That game was uh, really exciting from the cube standpoint. I didn't see much uh, uh, much in checker play, but uh, we certainly see now, for those of you who think that red may not have been right to take this cube, it was clearly a pretty good take for, for red. But, oh, well, in hindsight, though, he lost 24 points. How good a take is that? But he got in a redouble, so he really clearly got to become a favorite. Let's try it one more time. Set up, play from position. By the way, another reason I'm doing this is, is to show you with any position, even a normal position, how you can get a, some insight. When you roll it out, you'll find out what happens or the end results uh, 1,296 times if that you use your basic rollout parameter. But when you do it this way, you get to see why it's a take or why it's a double or how you play the checkers. And you might f learn some things and see, you'll understand the position a lot better this way. Uh, of how the game evolves and 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 uh, you know you can play it out yourself of course which would be helpful too but that's going to take you a lot more time I can play this out 10 times in in uh, 10 minutes okay let's see what happens now I probably didn't do it right action uh, I probably while I was talking I did something wrong let me put it back in again it's set up play from position. Maybe I didn't have Extreme Gammon playing Extreme Gammon. I think that's what it was. Extreme Gammon playing Extreme Gammon. Now hit OK. All right. He hit him. Sometimes you intentionally don't hit checkers here, but he's already got the timing. Maybe he's trying to keep him from being able to develop a board. So there's a fairly bad roll from Red. Uh, having to make the two point early, he doesn't want to make lower points. That, that, this hurts Red's equity quite a bit. Look at that. He gave up the six point to move to the five. Who in the world would do that? Because it's easier to remake the six. But that that was not on my radar. Uh, I'm, I'll go back and look at that play later. But you, there was a shift there that didn't have to happen from the six to the five. Those are the kinds of plays that uh, humans, I think, will rarely see or even think about. And by the way, it might even be wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying XG's right there. Well, he remade the six and proved it didn't matter too bad. When's Red going to do your redouble now? Well, good thing he didn't. He wasn't quite ready yet. When you get that second checker, you pretty much got it won. Before then, it's hard to redouble these kinds of back game positions. Oh, there's the crash. Now there's going to be a redouble soon. Here, well. Double. Yep, here we go. Drop. And pass. Okay. Let's look at that funny that funny move that uh, Red made with the double one where he shifted. Uh, is that it? Uh, double? Yeah. He Take. <laughs> anyway, I think you get the point. This is a fun way to, to study and learn a position and learn how to play the checkers. And I uh, hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy 
these really goofy positions, but uh, believe me, they come up uh, a lot in our chouette, <laughs> much more so than uh, normal players. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, check us out at uh, www thebackgammonlearningcenter.com. We've got 21 teachers in nine languages doing Double. lessons on the internet all over Take. the world. And uh, our students are winning tournaments all over the world. Very proud of the organization we've developed. Thanks for watching.